What is going on, everyone? Hope you're all doing well. The rumors for the upcoming AMD Radeon GPUs are getting hot and heavy with a leaked naming scheme that we haven't heard in quite some time, as well as some initial specs for the two 7900 variants coming from AMD, believed to be very soon, probably in early to mid-November. Will they be using the 12 HP VW PRW power cables, whatever they're called, the 12 volt horsepower power cables that are apparently melting right now on two NVIDIA graphics cards, like literally just two of them. So we're going to get into all of that, whether or not AMD is going to use those connectors and also people that are having some issues with them so far on their RTX 4090 graphics cards. So let's get into it. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro licenses for just $22, and then you can unlock the prestigious Dark Mode for Windows 10, which I honestly could not live without. It is blinding without the dark mode you guys needed in your life. And now you can also save an additional 25% off at checkout by clicking buy now on any software products over there. Just go ahead and add it into your cart and put in my code JP25 at checkout and apply. And that'll bring our price from $22.44 all the way down to $16.83, a savings of over $5. And I'll walk you through how to get your key and install it on Windows 10, go ahead and click Submit Order and complete your checkout from there. For me, that's gonna be with PayPal, and then click on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page and it will update in a matter of seconds, or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and type in the word activate. When you see that activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So first up, the naming scheme on the upcoming Radeon cards. It appears that, that there will be a new tier of variants as rumored and leaked from Benchlife that this will be called the 7900 XTX, which is a naming scheme that AMD has apparently used in the past for their X1000 series of GPUs. That was some time ago, a little bit before my time, honestly. I don't recall ever hearing of those. Um, but XTX, something they've used in the past, and it looks like they're going to be bringing it back as sort of like a top tier 7900 card which will be competing with the likes of the RTX 4090 and it also appears that there will be an XT variant as well of the 7900 so there'll be a 7900 XT and an XTX if you believe the rumors and leaks that have come from bench life over the past 24 hours but this is not the first time that we have seen this XTX naming scheme come up as mentioned on video cards in, during some early predictions from Cortex they mentioned XTX in the naming scheme as well. Now for the rumored specs, which should always be taken with a grain of salt, right now they're saying that the 5 nanometer, which is going to be processed by TSMC for the 7900 XTX and XT cards, they say that the stream processors will be roughly 12,288, that's the current rumored, with 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, 20 gigabit per second memory speed, and a little bit over a 400 watt TDP, settling right around 420, hashtag blaze it. For the 7900 XT, that's still going to be 5 nanometer on Navi 31 at 10,752 stream processors, 20 gigabytes of GDR6 with a smaller memory bus, but still not as small as the 12 gigabyte <laughs> RTX 4080, which will, I'm sure, which is going to be renamed, obviously, but we all know what down, what down with that. So, will this 7900 XTX be able to beat the RTX 4090? That's what we're kind of here to discuss and what people are, are hoping for or have some competition in that space might change things as far as pricing is concerned, availability, a lot of things yet to come up. I'm pretty sure the 7900 XTX is going to be beneath $1,600. I'm sure AMD is going to come out swinging and try to be very competitive with their pricing. How much lower it's going to be, hard to say. But we I, we could see it coming at $1,500 or they could try to really swing for the fences and price this thing at 1000 bucks like they did last generation. So 
Spec-wise, the current rumor is 12,288. If we compare that to the launch of the 6900 XT or the 6950 XT, those had 5,120 stream processors. And I'm going to attempt to not say CUDA cores here as my brain sort of goes to CUDA cores, even though they're more or less the same thing. It's just they're different technologies, different way they, they call them and stuff. But it's essentially kind of comes down to the same thing, more or less. But so the uh, 7900 XTX is believed to have 12,288, which is more than double of the 6900 XT which would probably put it right in the wheelhouse of RTX 4090. Will it be enough to beat it? We're going to have to wait and see. But if you take the 6900 XT and you compare that to the RTX 3090, you know, the 3090 was winning in pretty much everything there by a small margin, but fairly consistently, except for a few titles that really favored AMD one way or the other. Uh, so adding double that plus some, it's, I think we're going to have some real competition here at this high-end price point, this very likely over $1,000 price point for AMD, as well as NVIDIA. And then we've also got the smaller XT variant, which will probably be like competing with the 4080 16 gigabyte. And we'll also have to wait and see whether or not they're going to launch both those cards at the same time. There was no mention of a 7800 or a 7700 yet. So we're going to have to wait and see on that. Hopefully we get some details from AMD soon. Current rumors are that we should be hearing something early on in November, so stay tuned for that. Now, a question on a lot of people's mind is that, you know, 4090 used that new power connector, the 12 VHPWR, whatever it's called, power connector. Everyone was concerned about the melting. Turns out some of them are melting. Will AMD be using those? Well, a lot of people were wondering, so Kyle Bennett from Hard OCP did the legwork to find out, no, they will in fact not be using the 12 volt power connector that is on the RTX 4090. Kyle Bennett on Twitter said that after the NVIDIA GeForce melting drama, I have verified through multiple sources that the Radeon Navi 31 reference cards will not use the 12 VHPWR power adapter, and I could not verify any AIBs using the same cable on Navi 31 either. And then he posted a picture of a melted 12 volt power connector, which we'll look at uh, in a moment. So. If that's something you were concerned about at all with the power cables, I'm honestly not too concerned about them yet. I mean, two people out of how many thousands sold, I haven't had an issue. And it really comes down to, you know, taking proper care with the cables, not putting any crazy bends on them or anything. And it appears like with one of these cases, at least so far, that might have been what happened here. And we also don't know if he was overclocking, um, you know, things like that. Like, I've barely seen my card go, my 49 to go over 400 watts. So whether or not he was overclocking and trying to push this thing over 600, we don't know. There was some pictures posted of one of the first cables that melted here. As you can see, it's pretty pretty ha hardcore damage. I mean, this thing melted. It was borderline on fire. There was some smoke involved. But as you can see, he's got it mounted here in his case on a, on a riser cable. It's not a reference card. It's an add-in board card, and I'm not sure of the model, honestly. Can't really tell from this angle. It doesn't look like one that I'm very familiar with at all. If any of you sleuths want to let me know down in the comments below which card is, it could be a Gigabyte. He's got a Gigabyte motherboard. Uh, could be telling. Maybe he just, you know, maybe he has a brand loyalty there. So it could be a Gigabyte card. But I just really cannot tell uh, from this angle. But you're not meant to bend these cables. Some companies like Cable Mod are actually even coming out with these 90 degree cables uh, and adapters and stuff, which they're already they're already selling the the uh, the 90 degree adapters. But they're also coming out with dedicated cables, which will go directly into your power supply, so you won't have to use an adapter at all. So those are coming out on I believe Halloween. There was like an early list to sign up for these, but. In, in this particular instance, with, with this installed in the case, again, we don't know if he was overclocking. I mean, the guy has water cooling, so he's an enthusiast. It's not outside the realm of possibility that he was overclocking. But if you look at the cable here, you know, it doesn't. It looks okay to begin with. Like, these three cables coming off all look okay. But this fourth one, this one is giving me some cause for concern because it, it looks like it comes up and it almost looks like it takes like a near 90 degree hard bend like right at, like very close up to where the cable is not meant to be bent. So there's a possibility of user error here. I'm not ruling it out. I wouldn't rule it out. And I also wouldn't rule out that the thing just failed for whatever reason. Um, it's it's just, it's really impossible for us to say. Um, I was looking over on Reddit from the original post and it appears that NVIDIA had reached out to uh, one of the people that had 
uh, this happened and they were working with them to try to get all the details so they can, you know, see if they can recreate it or if, the, if, if it was operating out of spec, if the person was doing something with it, maybe they sh maybe shouldn't have been doing, you know, something along those lines. But, you know, just let me know down in the comments, what do you think about this picture right here? Like I said, these three cables, there's four in total that will be there for this cable adapter. This one looks like it has a very hard bend right there, like almost nine, like an almost 90 degree bend right there, like on the point where you're not supposed to bend these things. So it could it could be that it could be the atom board card. It could be the it could be the cable itself. It could be that these cards are just drawing way too much power and all of the early, you know, fear mongering and stuff like that was true. I don't think that that's the case. Uh, I think it's a combination of maybe overclocking and some user error here with uh, bending the cable in a way that maybe shouldn't have, and maybe that led to the cable failing, but hopefully we'll get some full details uh, in the near future once NVIDIA does any investigating and can determine exactly what caused the cable breaking, and I'm sure this guy is going to have no issues getting a replacement in a timely manner, you know, it, it, these things happen from time to time with new products, and, but, you know, like having two people out of thousands have their cables melt, it's not really alarming just yet. Not where I'm going to go, like, stand on a soapbox and start yelling at NVIDIA and telling them to change their ways and, like, recall every 4090 and change the power connector. Like, no, that's not going to happen. That's not realistic. Some people do that. I'm not one of them. But I think this is going to... I think it's getting a little bit blown out of proportion and it's going to be fine at the end of the day. But let me know your guys' thoughts on everything we discussed here down in the comments below on the power cables, the upcoming 7900 XTX. Are you waiting to see the numbers on those before making your purchase decision? Honestly, that would be the wise way to go. Get all of the independent reviews, get as much information as you can, and make a well-informed decision. And of course, prices are going to be a big factor too. And if AMD can come in with this new lineup of Navi 31 GPUs and be competitive with the likes of the 4090 and the unreleased yet 4080 16 gigabyte card, then that's just going to be better for us consumers at the end of the day. So look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about it, and I will catch you next time for another video. Peace.